Yeah, there's been a terrible week. It's been actually a couple of weeks now, probably the most difficult two weeks we've ever um, experienced in our life uh, in, this, in this industry. Why? Why um, is it the most difficult period of your life? You know, Anheuser-Busch, they held a social knife over all of our heads here and they dropped it very irresponsibly. It, it threw us into turmoil by standing on our biblical faith. It put us at odds with other people that didn't, that, that didn't take that stance. And that brought us into hell on earth. You know, us lefties have been uh, laughing it up a lot lately, making fun of hypersensitive right-wingers melting down over Bud Light's brand deal with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. But, you know, as we laugh it up, we're forgetting that normal people are getting hurt. People like Joe Pinovich, the owner of Grill's Restaurant in Florida, who we just heard from, and he described this entire ordeal as the most difficult weeks of his life. Still think this is funny, leftists? I feel so bad for him. <laughs> Listen, these right wing piss babies will spend an entire year shrieking about cancel culture and left wing snowflakes only to become the very embodiment of that left wing caricature themselves. It's amazing, isn't it? But that's to be expected when every accusation is a confession. But this whole kerfuffle over Bud Light has culminated in political commentary from right-wingers that is so fucking absurd, it is quite literally indistinguishable from parody at this point. So I'm going to give you an example here. So we're going to look at an actual video put out by the governor of Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who, by the way, brought back child labor in her state. The children look incredibly enthusiastic about this. Anyways, in this video, she's going to announce that she's selling koozies promoting real women. America presents Real Women of Politics. Real Women of Politics. Today, we salute all the real woman leaders of this great country. Real women don't have to fake it. Real women doing real things. Real women work too hard for this. Some big companies can't tell the difference between real and fake anymore. Real people know the difference. That's why we're introducing the Real Women of Politics Koozie. Real Women of Politics. Now, you can salute the Real Women of Politics at every backyard barbecue and tailgate. And if it covers up the label of a big woke company, well, that works too. Real Women of Politics. Order your Real Women of Politics koozie today. That was a banger. Okay, so right off the bat, there's so much to say about this. Uh, first of all, if I told you that that was a corny SNL clip satirizing the rights hysteria over Bud Light, I think that you'd believe it if I gave you no additional context. Now, second of all, if you're hiding the woke beer that you buy, doesn't that undermine the entire fucking point of the boycott in the first place? Seems kind of counterproductive. Uh, lastly, I have to admit that if I were forced to choose between just one of these koozies, I'm not going to lie, I would cop the K.I.V. koozie specifically because out of all of those women, she's the realest. We're getting a, <coughs> excuse me, a slight increase in the number of doses that we'll be getting to the state. Here you go, Kay. Put it on. It's your crown, queen. You've earned it. Now, listen... I'm still thinking about the video. The problem with basing who is or isn't a real woman on gender norms is that it's only going to come back to bite conservative women in the asses at some point because not that long ago, the definition of real women in the eyes of conservatives was very different. A hundred years ago, Republicans might have argued that you're only a real woman if you stay at home and take care of your family and not be a governor. In fact, the first female governor in U.S. history, Nellie Ross, wasn't elected until 1924, and she was a Democrat. 
The first Republican woman to become a governor was Vesta Roy in 1982, 57 years later. But here's the catch. She wasn't actually elected. She only served as governor temporarily after the incumbent had died. It wouldn't be until 1987 when Republicans would elect their first female governor, K. Orr in Nebraska. So Sarah Huckabee Sanders was only five years old at that time. So for the entirety of her life, she's seen Republicans embrace female governors as real women. But not that long before she was born, her party pretty much had very different views, much more traditional, antiquated views about the role of women, specifically in politics. Now, I bring this up not to mansplain misogyny to Sarah, but rather to point out the very obvious fact that gender norms are in a constant state of flux. And some, arguably most people, don't meet society's criteria for the gender that they were ascribed at birth. K. Ivy's short hair, for example, was often historically associated with masculinity. Women wearing pants was considered taboo once before as well. Hell, conservatives attacked Daniel Radcliffe's girlfriend because she was taller than him, and thus, since she's taller, she couldn't possibly be a quote-unquote real woman. She has to be trans when, in fact, this is a cis woman. But even if she were trans, that literally wouldn't matter because trans women are women. And like cis women, trans women also aren't perfectly feminine. I mean, look at me. There are masculine and feminine qualities about me that are pretty apparent. I have a beard, which is oftentimes associated with masculinity, but I also have a higher pitched voice compared to cis males, other cis males at least. So at the end of the day, we're all just people and gender is a social construct, so none of this really matters. But very few of us are perfectly masculine or perfectly feminine. That's the point. But for conservatives, this is all about social control and actuality. For example, listen to the justification that Ben Shapiro gives while supporting local bans on men wearing women's clothing in public. Should wearing dresses and skirts be illegal for men in public? If so, should wearing pants for women be illegal in public? Well, pants not so much because there is a female version of pants that is nearly indistinguishable in many cases from, from male pants. Um, but men wearing traditional female clothing in public, I think that there's a case that local, zone, that, that local communities should be able to stop that. Sure. I mean, we have local laws about being naked or, or indecent exposure, or at least we used to. So pants for women are fine because there's a female version of pants, according to Ben Shapiro. OK, hear me out. What if they made a male version of dresses and it became culturally permissible for men to wear dresses and most men wore dresses? I mean, in his very argument, He's demonstrating how gender and gender norms are in a constant state of flux. Besides, has any of these motherfuckers ever heard of a kilt? I mean, that video there, though, is really important because it demonstrates the irrationality of their arguments. It's driven purely by emotion. And they just want to control people. That's what this is about. Enforcing rigid gender norms is one element of their control. It's one aspect of the theocracy that they want to impose on all of us. But... Getting back to Bud Light, in the end, cancel culture won because Bud Light caved to the mob, which is what conservatives say you should never, ever do. MSNBC columnist Caitlin Burns writes, Bud Light recently made a play for queer consumers when it produced a single can of the brand's beer featuring trans TikTok influencer Dylan Mulvaney's likeness. On April 1st, Mulvaney made an Instagram post promoting Bud Light to her nearly 2 million followers, but the company's response to the conservative backlash that followed suggests that its campaign didn't come with any real commitment to inclusion. Shocker. The Associated Press reported Saturday, citing media reports, that Alyssa Heinersheed, Bud Light's vice president of marketing who oversaw the partnership with Mulvaney will be replaced and is taking a leave of absence. The Wall Street Journal reported Sunday that Daniel Blake, an Anheuser-Busch marketing executive, also took a leave of absence. Yeah, so at the end of the day, they capitulated. And they didn't have to, but I mean, when it comes to these corporations, they don't care about anything but money. So what conservatives don't understand is that Bud Light, they never actually cared about trans people or trans rights. They did a brand deal with Dylan Mulvaney to market their products to LGBTQ plus people who they also want to profit off of because there's a lot of gay people in this country. 20% of Gen Z, they identify as LGBTQ plus. So of course, Bud Light wants to sell them their products as well. It's a huge demographic. 
but organized backlash to Bud Light ended up undermining profits in the end, which is why they ultimately caved. But in doing so, they alienated LGBTQ plus people now by abandoning us the second it became convenient for them to do so. See, the thing about social justice causes is that they're zero-sum games by their very nature. You're either on the right side of history and you stand for equality, or you're on the side of bigots. There's really no way to appease both sides here. But Bud Light prioritized short-term profits despite the long-term damage that this will inevitably do to their brand because I do believe that there will come a day when trans people will be perceived by the overwhelming majority of Americans as valid. In fact, most Americans already support trans rights, but when it comes to specific issues with regard to trans sports, trans healthcare, conservatives have been chipping away at their support. But like all social justice issues, I do believe that we will win on this particular issue. But as obtuse as conservatives are, they are right about one thing, and that's that representation does matter. That's the reason why the reaction to this was so strong, because they know that the mere presence of a trans person on a product, I guess historically perceived as a conservative brand, I don't really know, honestly, that normalizes them. That normalizes trans people, which is precisely the antithesis of the genocidal rights current mission. But in conclusion, this battle won't be won in the realm of corporate America. It'll be won on the ground with grassroots activists and at the legislative level, which is where the rest of us really should dedicate most of our time towards. But I don't think it's wrong to laugh at these dipshits when they shriek about the most innocuous shit imaginable i mean imagine if i don't know some corporation mcdonald's did a brand deal with charlie kirk do you think that anyone would shriek that loudly on the left or liberals do you think that anyone would be as equally outraged doubtful but regardless conservatives are going to conservative and that means be completely hypocritical and cry about cancel culture while simultaneously being the mob that they have historically denounced. And when I say historically, I mean for the past couple of years or so when they made cancel culture the boogeyman. But now cancel culture's back, baby. And they're all in on canceling corporations that go woke, apparently. So, um, yeah, Bud Light isn't the first corporation to be canceled by conservatives, and they absolutely will not be the last. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralists, woke moralists, woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. Her genital way. region was exposed. I let her have her way.